there are ways of making oil synthetically and a company called Atmospheric Fuel Synthesis has determined a good way economically to do this and I think this is an excellent route because we will be making the fuel from air and water and wind turbines. Wind turbines in the North Sea or on the land make electricity. The electricity is used to fuel the process of extracting the hydrogen from water and extracting the carbon dioxide from the air and these two are fused together with a catalyst to make oil basically and it can be fertilizers, it can be uh, plastics, it can be uh, Jet A1, it could be anything. Let's assume that the Luddites who th say well there isn't any climate change, there isn't a shortage of oil, uh, let's assume they're right. Uh, when they're right that more oil is produced, more oil is burnt and then the climate change does take place and then everyone's sorry. Supposing they believe us and we start to do it and then we're proven wrong and that they were right. What have we lost? We've, we've cleaned up the atmosphere, we've made the changes from uh, shifting money around the planet to people who are obscenely rich, from people who are very poor and we've got a, a clean energy system. So I think the options are pretty clear, it's a win-win situation whichever way we go and the only way I can see to go is to opt for the way of clean energy and this clean energy will then be creating new jobs, new employment. The whole of the fossil fuel industry has got to be changed over to renewables because the fossil fuel industry is dead on its knees up, it's, go it's going to exist, it's not going to stop but it's going to di diminish, decline year after year and the renewables are now increasing at the rate of 33% a year. That's a fantastic rate of growth. AFS can provide sustainable fuel by the end of this year. It will be in small quantities, five litres a day, but it will prove the concept and from that point on we need to construct something making 10 tonnes a day or 100 tonnes a day and that will take another couple of years at least. So we're talking some years away before fuel is available commercially in any quantity at all unless, as we said before, there's some intervention by an injection or of capital or government or something that would uh, enhance it more quickly. Well batteries are very usable, I mean I've had an electric car for 14 years and I'm very happy with it. Uh, rapeseed and ethanol are all good systems. Uh, we need them because our fossil fuel cons consumption continues to rise and what we want to do is fall it and if we make some fuel from bioenergy and some fuel uh, by uh, fermentation of crops and things like this, we will have um, less demand for fossil fuel. And if we couple that with an AFS system, what I think is a multi-banded approach where we can get fuel from many different sources to make up the quantity we need more quickly than we would if we con tried to concentrate on one. I worked for Shell for a while. I don't think the oil companies will welcome us. They are fully aware of what we're doing. Some companies would rather not develop this, oil companies I'm talking about, would rather not develop these systems because you must remember in the final closing days of oil the price is going to go higher and higher and higher. The cost of retrieving oil from the ground stays the same. So the oil companies are going to make an enormous profit with that profit in say five or ten years time they could afford to buy the way into the renewable energy in industry that's developed. But if the renewable energy de de developed quicker and it spoils their chances of making the big profits which they had envisaged, that will not make us popular guys with them. We've looked at our marketing concepts and we believe our market lies not on the petrol forecourt sales because that's controlled by the oil companies, but in the supermarket forecourts, they're, they're, they don't have a brand. And the other people who are not brand conscious is the Air Force, the military, shipping lines, train lines and aircraft. All those industries will take any fuel as long as it's good price, quality, fuel. It's not easy because it means it's higher cost initially. It's much lower cost eventually because you avoid the damage associated with CO2 pollution. The price of this fuel made synthetically is, is very reasonable. Um, most of the fuel price at the pump, as you know, is tax. It's not, not the whole price of the fuel. 
Our price is likely to be in the region of 25 to 35 pence a litre, depending on the quantities we make and whether we work 24 hours, seven days a week. So it's a very reasonable cost. And the great thing about it is that once we've bought all the equipment, that is the reactors for the refinery, the storage vessels and pumps and so on, and the wind turbines, we have nothing to spend for 25 years because that's the approximate life of wind turbines and of a chemical plant. So our price is going to be fixed ahead for 25 years. Now if somebody could tell me that oil prices will be fixed ahead for 25 years, I would th think that was the best news I'd heard for forever. Unfortunately, it's not be the case. As I said before, oil will peak at 200, 300, 400 and more dollars a barrel because it'll be so short. Whereas we'll be at a fixed price and that means an enormous commercial advantage. So the oil companies cannot stop us. They can prevent us going on the petrol forecourts to the car, but that's about all they can do. And I'm afraid progress will happen whatever they do.